Hi, welcome to my second YouTube video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm totally new at this. And as you can hear, I'm attempting to do a voiceover for this one. So we'll see how that goes. By the way, English is not my first language. So you might hear some strange made up words that nobody understands, including myself, because I'm Swedish. So in this video, I will be painting a white horse and my sweet chihuahua, her name is Lina. Here she is on the right and the other one is Samson. So cute because who doesn't want to see my dogs? <laughs> okay, on to the video. So I'm starting with blocking in the background and because the horse and dog are so bright and the background so dark, I decided to paint around them to make it easier to block them in later. Usually I would just cover the entire canvas because that tends to give me a smoother background, but for this type of background it works just fine. So here I turned my canvas. If you find some lines are hard to paint because of a weird angle, just turn your canvas making sure my edges are nice and clean and I'm gonna need a couple of layers for better coverage. Don't want that white canvas showing through. Just make sure your first layer is completely dry or your paint will lift off. Keep in mind though that I'm no expert on this by any means. I'm still learning tons myself and I'm just showing how I used to work. There's no right or wrong here. There are so many different ways to achieve the same end result. I'm just showing how I like to work. Blocking in some white flowers. And painting some grass with a liner brush. And here I'm not worrying about the colors so much. I'm just blocking them in with a really whitish green to get them to show up because white is more opaque than green. So I add that first and then glaze over the green color that I want. in some red flowers and <clears throat> red is usually really transparent so if I, if I wanted these flowers to be really really red and really show up I would have put a white layer first because white is more opaque and then when that's dry put the red on top but um, for these flowers I want them to be really dark and subtle so I skip that part Apparently I wanted more green in my background, so I painted over it. Don't be afraid to try different things. If it doesn't look good, you just paint over it. Keep going back and forth and layering and layering until it looks good. Blocking in some of those white flowers again. And here I move on to the horse, starting with blocking in the darkest shadows first and moving from darkest to lighter and lighter and the lightest last. I find it easier to work from dark to light rather than the other way around. Notice that I'm not just using black and gray for the shadows, which is what you would naturally think to do when painting a white animal, but that would make it look really plain and flat with not much depth. Um, white reflects a lot of colors around it, so when I paint white things, I mostly use purples and blues for shadows with a tiny bit of black mixed in just to tone them down a little bit and only use black for the very darkest, blackest parts. Blocking in the eye and using my liner brush for the smallest edges and lines. And I realized after that I should have blocked in the entire eye black first and then done the eyelashes on top. I had to go back and forth quite a bit to get them right. It would have been easier to just paint them on top of the black first. Once I blocked in the eye, I noticed I hadn't gone dark enough on the shadows, so I had to go over them again to darken things up. If I had blocked in the eye first, it would have been easier to judge how dark my shadows should have been since it is the darkest, blackest part of the horse, so that's what I will do next time. And right now it's looking quite horrible, but it always does that before it starts to look good. Your painting will always have horrible stages, but that just means it's not finished yet. You just keep working on it until it looks how you want it. Trying to create a bit of a fur texture. I'm not sure how I liked how that turned out, but never be afraid of experimenting. That's how you learn, that's how you get better. Just don't be afraid to try new things. And if it doesn't look good, it's no big deal. You just paint over it. Adding some more shadows and fur in the forehead, going back and forth, smoothing things out. 
And I have been working quite a bit on the main here already, which I sadly didn't record, but I will show how I do that in other videos. Adding some fur on the neck and really pay attention to your reference photo, which direction the strands of hair go. It's really important that they go in the right direction to get that three-dimensional realistic look and also to blend in. Working some more on that mane, adding more little strands of hair and fixing some colors and values. And especially for fur and hair, I like to work in lots and lots of really thin translucent layers, which gives a really nice depth. And I'm using just water to thin my paint. And always remember, you have to let your previous layers dry completely before going over them again, or they will lift off and look horrible. working in my lap because I'm a genius. I actually like working in my lap a lot when I'm painting teeny tiny details. I feel like I have more control that way, but not ideal for video making. Sorry. Oh, blocking in my chihuahua. Apparently I didn't record um, when I started, but I started with blocking in the darkest parts again and moving on to the lighter and starting blocking in with a liner brush, which is not ideal. It takes forever, but her portrait was so small in this painting. I should have picked a larger sized canvas for this depiction because her portrait just got too tiny to get those fine, fine details in. But what do you do? You have to make it work anyway. So uh, continuing to blocking in and smoothing things out. Finally using a larger brush and I'm not uh, too concerned about the colors so far and uh, I will correct them later with uh, glazing. Mostly working on my values, adding some details in the eye and more fur. And I was so, so stressed at this point. Uh, I had only a few hours left until I had to turn it into the gallery. So I did not have as much time as I would have liked. And here I'm starting to correct the colors with glazing, which just means I'm painting over with really watered out paint to make it translucent because I want those previous layers and details showing through. And when you're glazing, you do not want to use opaque colors like white and black. If you're using Liquitex Basics acrylic paint, which I'm using, pretty much all other colors are very transparent. And for glazing with white, I use a transparent mixing white. And here is my finished painting. If you liked this video, please a like and subscribe. Let me know what you think and please be nice. This was very much out of my comfort zone. Um, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.